So us NBA fans, we talk a lot about champions, you know, teams that won one, two, three, four, five championships. We like to talk about dynasties, but what about the teams that never quite won the championship? The first team we'll be talking about, the 2018 Houston Rockets. Who could forget? They were so close. If Chris Paul doesn't get injured, this team wins some rings or wins a ring in 2018. Before we get into talking about the 2018 Rockets, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new uploads. Before we talk about the 2017-2018 season, let's get you caught up with the years prior. 2014, we know, Dame ended their season. We were at the game. 2015, they come back. They had a really good season. Second in the West this year, 56 and 26. They lost in the conference finals to the Warriors. We'll talk about the Warriors more later in the conference finals, but this kind of gets forgot about. They had a nice bounce back year in 2015. Yeah, I feel like this is where Daryl Morey's obsession with beating the Warriors started though. Yeah, that makes sense. And it was an obsession that almost became un healthy to a point it did but we'll get more into that a little bit later <laughs> yeah this is when Harden took over the team he carried the team Dwight only played 41 games and then it was more of that the next season they actually regressed big time yeah they sucked <laughs> in 2016 <laughs> it was really weird they were the AC they went 41 and 41 and again who else the Golden State Warriors beat him in five and Dwight Howard jumped ship to the Hawks that offseason yeah really bad year if I remember correctly I think they fired Kevin McHale after like 11 games yeah, that sounds about right. Replaced him with JB Bickerstaff. Never a good sign, by the way, when you fire a coach like two weeks into your season. And then 2017, another just goes back and forth. They had a bounce back year, won 55 games. They got the third seed, but everyone remembers this year. Hard was insane this year, but in the playoffs <laughs> against the Spurs, we all remember that Ginobili block on him. And then we remember game six where he played like yeah, he was really, really bad this series. Like, he had a great year, and to be honest, he did not have any help on this team, but not good in this series whatsoever. Yeah, game six, I think they lost by, what, 39 at home, and Kawhi Leonard didn't play for the Spurs. I think LaMarcus didn't play. I, no, LaMarcus played. I think it was either, like, Tony Parker or something didn't play. And he lost by 39 at home. Harden scored 10 points. I mean, now that's just a regular occurrence, but back in the day, <laughs> this was like, yeah, what the? Because this, this was the first year of, like, MVP-level Harden, where he dominated the ball all the time and for him to score 10 points in a playoff game is ugh, bad day at the office and that led to the offseason Daryl Morin knew he needed to swing big and they bring in Chris Paul which everyone at least I was just shocked when this happened what was your reaction yeah definite shock because it came out of nowhere there was no rumors about it there was nothing it just happened and it was like I'm sorry what <laughs> Of all the players, you because I feel like most people are like, okay, go get another wing guy. Maybe go get a big who's not Dwight Howard. You know, someone who can compliment James Harden. No, they go get another ball dominant point guard. Like Chris Paul's not a scorer, but he needs the ball to be effective. Everyone I think was wondering like, how is this going to work? Also worth pointing out, they gave up Pat Bev, Lou Williams, Montres Hill, and Sam Decker, and a first round pick, just one, for the best point guard of the NBA. They did, and at first when I saw that, I looked back, I couldn't believe that was the haul. It was a sign and trade to be fair. So I think Chris Paul already wanted to leave. So it kind of makes sense, but even then. I mean, when Rudy Gobert goes for three rotation players, <laughs> yeah. the runner up for rookie of the year probably, and four first round picks. Yeah. And Chris Paul only goes for three rotation players and one first round pick that's a that's a good day of business for the houston rockets and you kind of touched on it i remember everyone was thinking this ain't gonna work james harden used to having the ball in his hands chris paul obviously used to having the ball in his hands how are they gonna work together i tell you yeah, when this first happened i was like this ain't working <laughs> ain't no way in, in hell these two are gonna work with how much harden had the ball because he was like though that was the reason it worked the year prior was because harden just dominated the ball dwight howard wasn't around to you know take up touches it was just harden dominating the ball eventually getting the ball to his teammates or scoring like everything revolved around him to put another guy that does that next to him i was like no nah, this ain't gonna work but mike d'antoni worked miracles with this team to be fair though chris paul kind of started off a bit shaky so they played the defending champion the warriors in the bay the opening night and they actually won this game they won it by one it came down to the end they were down 16 at one point in the third but pj tucker iced the game at the line steph missed a three at the end but chris paul in his rockets debut after you trade for him only scores four points 
See, the least surprising thing that you just said is Steph missing a three at the end. Yeah, I mean, it's Steph Curry. Of course he's going to miss the three at the end. He's not clutch, people. He isn't. Yeah, let's just get like, let's just be real. He's not clutch. He did just beat the Kings, though. Yeah, they did just beat the Kings. Chris Paul starts off shaky, but they go on a 13-game win streak early in the season. Then they fall into the five-game losing streak. And again, Chris Paul in that losing streak averaged eight points. Harden gave you 37 a game. Chris Paul only giving you eight. I know he's not known as a scorer, but Chris Paul, like I said, kind of had a shaky start with this team. I tell you what, that stretch right there, harbinger of things to come. Like it just, it just is. But what's insane, I didn't remember this, but looking back, they won 28 out of 29 games during February and March. That is unreal. I tell you what, one of the games in that stretch probably was them coming into Portland yep. and ending our 13 game <laughs> winning streak, a game we went to, a game that was genuinely one of the loudest games I've ever been to in my entire life. Yeah. It was, it was just a regular season game because the Rockets were the best team in the West. They had the best record. The Blazers won a 13 game winning streak. Like this was a big benchmark game for the Blazers to see if we could hang with the Western Conference best. Oh, of course we couldn't, but you know, fun memory until we lost. Yeah, that crowd was loud as hell, but they iced it out. Finished the year 65 and 17, insanely good record. The next highest team, the Raptors had 59 wins this year. No team had 60 plus besides them. Harden wins MVP, obviously. Braun, I think finished second this year, but Harden won it easily. Best offense, wasn't even close. Six best defense though, that's pretty impressive for the Rockets. You wouldn't expect that from them. I mean, and for any Mike D'Antoni team, anything higher than 15th is impressive to me because his teams don't play defense at all. I think the biggest stat you got to look at though, they shot 42.33s a game. In like today's standards, yeah, teams do that. The next highest that season was the Brooklyn Nets who shot 35.7. The Warriors started the three-point revolution. The Rockets took it to its logical extreme. Yeah. I mean, they ended up taking it way too far. Remember when they had P.J. Tucker at center that one year? Yeah, that's, that's beyond the logical yeah, extreme. Way too far. So the Warriors were obviously the overwhelming favorites to win again, but the Rockets, you'd have to put them second, even ahead of the Cavs team, because this is the Cavs team where LeBron just carried. They played the Timberwolves in the first round. And how about this? They hold playoff Jimmy to 15.8 points per game. That's how you know you're doing something right. I mean, we've we've seen it recently. The Bucks couldn't hold him. Yeah, game one was kind of close in this series, but overall, Rockets won easily. Then they played the Jazz. Predictably, they won this easily again in five, but the Jazz won game two in Houston, and that led us to the conference finals, Rockets Warriors. I remember game one, first of all, there was the moment when Draymond shoved Harden to like set the tone, quote unquote. Yeah, which, like two minutes into the game, get a technical. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, it was so dumb, and I was I hated Draymond for that. But the Warriors ended up winning this game by 13, and I remember I was like, this series is over. You have a bad habit of doing this. I do. Of calling series way too early. <laughs> but that Warriors team, they felt like Thanos. I mean, think about the perspective at the time. The Warriors with KD, the Rockets, it felt like they needed to win that game one. Like, you gotta admit that. And then they lose by 13. Not like a close game at the buzzer. They lost by 13. Well, it's because Draymond set the tone. Yeah, exactly. And, and Draymond never, set the tone. And they never recovered. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, game two, they responded 127 to 105. So even series on our hands going back to the Bay. And like I said, I thought the series was over. After I saw the Warriors win by like 40 points, 126, 85, I was like, okay, this is for sure done at that point. Yeah, fairly predictable was the Rockets responding with a game two blow. And even more predictable than that was the Warriors <laughs> blowing them out in game three. <laughs> yeah, but then the series got real. I was going to say, so you thought the game was over after game one and game three. What did you think after game four? Oh, I was hyped. Of course. <laughs> because... Because you have to overreact. Yeah, I'm, I get, you got to overreact. And I'm, of course, the biggest Warriors hater. So then they even up the series like, okay, can, can we take down the Prime Warriors here? Like, Chris Paul was doing his thing. This game came down to the final possession and Clay missed. And I was like, okay, we got a series on our hands now. Let's go. Let's go game five. I remember my family went to Disneyland. <laughs> During the time of this series. Really? Yes. During the time of this series, we're at Disneyland. But for Game 5, I was like, nah, I'll skip out on the park. I got to see this game. 
I got to see this game. And I was happy. Another close win by the Rockets. But at the end of this game, Chris Paul goes in for a little floater with less than two minutes to go. And he injured his hamstring. Yeah, I don't like discrediting the Warriors championships. That's a blatant lie, by the way. I love doing it. <laughs> but God, they, every single year, just feels like there's always one injury that just derails their opponents. Whether it was Kevin Love and Kyrie or Kawhi or Jim. Ja, or especially Chris Paul. And this one, like, talk about brutal, brutal bad timing. Also, before we get off of game five, remember the shimmy? Chris Paul hitting the shimmy on Steph. Honestly, I don't like Chris Paul as a player. That's obviously my favorite moment ever of him. Like, that that was amazing that he did that. Yeah, I love Chris Paul for this. I, I also hate him as a player, too. This is one of my favorite moments in NBA history, but you want to know what I love about this even more? What? It's the fact that Steph's laughing at him as yeah. he's doing it. That was a gut punch for the Rockets, but you come back game six, you only need to win one game to go to the finals. You don't have Chris Paul, but you can get him back healthy for the finals. You're up 16 at one point in the second quarter in game six on the road, and you end up losing by third. Yeah, because the third quarter happened. <laughs> yeah, the third quarter Warriors. And the Warriors are famously great in the third quarter. <laughs> And then, one of the more iconic Game 7s in recent playoff memory. Oh my god. <laughs> 27 missed threes in a row. Basically impossible from a statistical perspective, but the Rockets did it. See, I fully understand that the Rockets' whole thing was shooting threes or shooting layups, but once they missed like 15 in a row, just take a mid-range jumper. You gotta see one go through the hoop. Like, the fact that they kept chucking and chucking and chucking, even when they got up to 27 misses in a row, there's staying true to your identity, and then there's just being stubborn. I'll have to double check the exact amount, but I swear Trevor Reason was like 0 for 10 for three, or like he was like 1 for 10 in this game. I just remember him hucking up threes and missing all of them. And why is Trevor Reza taking 10 threes? Because the Rockets, literally everyone had the green light. If you were even just remotely open, it's like, shoot the three. Why not? And you can't do that when you're trying to protect the lead because they were up nine at halftime. They were up nine at halftime. And like, if Chris Paul's there, I said in the intro, I think this team wins the ring this year. I think so too. I would have taken pressure off James Harden in game six and seven. I, it would have given them someone that would have calmed them down when the Warriors are making their inevitable third quarter run in game seven to take the lead back. Like Chris Paul, would have calmed them down. He would have ran a pick and roll with Clint Capella and Capella would have either got a dunk or Chris Paul would have hit a mid-range shot. We'll talk about some more iconic teams that never win a finals later in this series. But if I have to say it off the top of my head, I think this is the best team ever ever to not win a championship. There's a lot of great ones, but this team was just special. What they could do on offense, the versatility between Chris Paul and Harden. The fact that they lost to the Warriors too just makes it hurt even more. <laughs> of course they lost to the Warriors because they would have beat that Cavs team. I know LeBron would have put up a fight, but that Cavs team was not good. They would have won the finals. That Cavs team would have somehow won game one on the road in Houston and then lost every game in the series after that by like 20 plus. I completely agree. That's the video, guys. What do you think of the 2018 Houston Rockets? Do you think they win a ring if Chris Paul stays healthy? If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.